1038 days ago, I released the Moshi Monster Iceberg, and to this day, the comments and support I get on that video are unlike anything I've ever had. But the video wasn't perfect, and you guys have spent the last three years telling me things I either got wrong or missed completely. And in my own research on those topics, and despite my 50 hours of research and almost 40,000 people watching, I still discovered some new things myself that nobody had pointed out. From gender identity models a decade ahead of its time and changed modeling animations to a deep dive into a Chinese ripoff and a player so famous that he had a statue on Main Street. It's been a while, but welcome back to the Moshi Monster Iceberg. In the iceberg, I stated that two albums were released, being Music Rocks and the Moshi Movie soundtrack. But there was also a series of singles released with no official album title that I can find. But they include tracks such as the Moshi Monsters theme song, Moshi Moshi Moshi, the Moshi Dance, a classic, and the Iggy Chomp, with the full list being on screen now. These songs were released regularly from early 2011 up until mid-2014, with the Moshi Dance being the only one removed from the channel due to the infamous Lady Goo Goo lawsuit. This means that technically there are three albums, but only two with official cover art and a title. That's it for corrections, but there are a few things that you guys said you were surprised that I completely missed. So put your snorkels on, because we're about to go deeper than we've ever gone before. Sweet, Sweet Tooth first appeared in Strange Glove From Above, released April 7th, 2011, almost 13 years ago. However, they have never been addressed using gender-specific pronouns. The last monster to ask is still at the hospital wearing a gobstopper. It's consistently quoted when anybody asks regarding their gender. Um, Mr. Sweet Tooth? Oh, Mrs. Sweet Tooth. Oh, whatever, you can go on through. It's said on the Music Rocks radio again, furthering their gender ambiguity. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be regarding gender identity, but through my research it would appear that, from the evidence we've got, Sweet Tooth would be agender, where a person does not associate with a particular gender, also known as gender neutral. With Sweet Tooth first appearing in 2011, and these hints being dropped throughout the 2010s, this is one of the earliest characters I can think of to have this gender ambiguity, which is fascinating. Do you remember a Moshi camera app? Because some people do, but nobody can find a single trace of it online anywhere. The closest things being the Talking Poppet app, similar to Talking Tom with a photo room, and I've also found some Snapchat filters. But aside from these, I couldn't find anything. Is Talking Poppet what we're looking for here as it does have this feature, but it isn't the main draw? Or are we being gaslit? Let me know below. <laughs> F*** me! So somehow, when discussing the Moshi spin-off apps, I completely missed Buster's Lost Moshlings. What's strange about this app is there's nothing discussing how, why, or even when it shut down. It was last updated in May 2015, but unlike the other apps, there's nothing to signify that it shut down, aside from the App Store no longer showing it. Buster's Lost Moshlings follows the plot of Doctor Strange Glove finding Buster's Moshling Sanctuary and all of the Moshlings getting lost and needing collecting, including 71 Moshlings. This app also had free paid DLCs at $1.99 each, alongside 80 trophies that you can unlock and collect. Initially released in 2011, Lady Goo Goo was originally in this game, before having to be removed. At a later point, the free DLCs, Buster's Ranch, the Fun Park, and the Port reportedly became free for all players. This spin-off game not only shares a name with a book released six months beforehand, with Buster's Lost Moshlings being a Where's Wally style book, but it was actually related as the app was launched via Puffin Books, essentially making a spin-off game off a spin-off book of a game. And if Moshi Monsters did this 13 years ago, how long until FNAF get the same idea? Terminator is most well known for his statue on Main Street before inevitably being replaced by the Elder Furry in March 2012. But who was this summer? Why did they have a statue where he was of comparable importance to the Elder Furry, and why did so many people mention him in my comments? Many believe Terminator to have the statue because of a competition in the Daily Growl they won, with the contest in question being the first player to ever complete their Moshling Zoo. This, however, 
is only part of the truth. See, Terminator did complete the zoo and have their statue for that reason. However, they were not the first. The actual winner of the competition was a monster known as Yvonne 921 who gave up the prize and title to Terminator, who reportedly came in a very close second. This statue became a staple of Main Street and it even got decorated at Twistmas. Interestingly, it doesn't appear that the plan was always to replace the statue of Alderfairy, as in January of 2012, the statue was removed but not replaced, and Moshi Monsters hosted a contest teasing that the winner may replace Terminator, or at the very least choose what replaced it. Unless of course the winner of that chose to replace it with the Elder Fairy, but I can't find any record of that unfortunately. After the Main Street statue was replaced, Terminator themselves was given an exclusive version of the statue for their own room, where it disappeared for a final time when the game shut down. Unless of course you want to play the cool math game with the same name. This is something I found very interesting in the comments where Fairy Draws points out how some of the Moshi movie soundtrack is made up of leap motifs from music rock songs. As a massive fan of the Moshi music, I love this. This is pointed out specifically with the Hot Air Balloon takeoff track being a leap motif of the Moshi theme song. This explains how all the music has such a Moshi Monsters feel while a lot of franchises miss that beat sometimes, like with the early 2000s Scooby-Doo movies having music that doesn't quite line up. There's not much to prove or find here, but listen closer next time you watch the movie and just maybe you'll catch something a little bit different. Whilst we touched on various real life appearances of the Moshi Monster characters alongside Mr. Moshi, I somehow missed the biggest and most local one to me, which was the Owen Towers takeover in 2014. In order to promote the Moshi movie, various characters came to the UK theme park Alton Towers to provide fans with fun activities and even a Moshling egg quiz trail around the park to find the lost egg. If I had a nickel for every time a Moshling egg got lost, I'd have a good few nickels, although I'm not sure really what a, what a nickel is. What is really cool about this is that Owen Towers closes November through to March, so the park and certain rides opened in February half term exclusively for Moshi Monsters. The hotel even had a fancy dress disco and a whole interactive Moshi Zone. The characters that appeared were Poppet and Katsuma, along with the first ever appearances of Buster Bumble Chops and the man himself, Dr. Strangeglove. Clowns on stilts at Scarefest? Nah. Dr. Strangeglove is the scariest thing the Midlands have ever seen. Yeah, we can do it. No, we can't. But we gotta get to it. Not a chance. Speaking of movie promotion, Fairy Draws also noted that to promote the Moshi movie, the two main voice actors for Katsuma and Poppet took over a radio station for an hour in the UK. Unfortunately, this may be lost media as I cannot find a trace of this anywhere, but it's super cool and also led me to my next discovery. Rory Scroll is making a documentary, a movie, all about Monstro City! How I missed this I have no idea, but how it wasn't commented either is nuts. Either I'm stupid and everyone knew this, or nobody did. But did you know, there was a Moshi TV show? This only lasted 9 weekly episodes, from November 4th 2012 to December 28th 2012, and included segments showcasing fans' letters, art, videos and more, on top of fun games and exclusive info. These were broadcast on both the Moshi YouTube channel and the TV Island in-game which I always did wonder what it was there for. Some of these episodes have hundreds of thousands of views, so maybe this is just an owl for me, but it's cool nonetheless. A simple but overlooked fact is that Lady Goo Goo wasn't the only moshling to get a makeover, as Mr. Snoodle had a total animation change after becoming the focal point in the Moshi movie. Initially, he just looked around and blinked when clicked on. However, they updated the little fella to have a little dance to hit song Do the Doodle. Very cool attention to detail, although I am curious why Mr. Snoodle of all the Moshlings was the focus in the movie, when I never heard anyone say that he was close to their favourite prior to the movie's release. It was always Chop Chop, Iggy, Big Bad Bill, and speaking of Big Bad Bill... 
Something else that I discover myself in my research on this follow-up video is yet another app that I totally missed. And that's because it has an age rating that isn't 3+, plus, not 5+, plus, not even 10+. Plus. It's marked as 100+. Plus. Jokes aside, this game had in-game purchases and seemed to be targeted towards the parents of the Moshi Monster players. As this was, believe it or not, Moshi Monster's Candy Crush. The story goes that Big Bad Bill triggered the volcano to erupt and cover Monstro City in gummies. So now you, Ellie, must work together with the duo Lingo Bird to save all the Moshlings trapped and defeat Big Bad Bill. Whether you're saving Chop Chop in level 1 or Topsy Turvy in level 145. 145 levels! Oh, and after you do that, they turn golden. Then there's winter mode. Now they're muddy? Why are we in the Wild West? Fine, I guess I'll save Hawaiian and you're, you're the fox. In level 300? This game does give O'Reilly his official Moshling debut, as well as original songs I have never heard before. And to be honest, I only discovered this app because of the next topic. I can't believe I missed this in the original video, because this is insane. My attention was brought to Rafi because he was in Moshling's Rescue, but I didn't think much of it until I went deeper. If you've played Moshi Retin Community or online, then you've likely come across the Moshling Rafi, the first and only of the Swindley set. As I didn't play the game too much after 2012, I assumed this just to be one of the later Moshlings added. But oh no. In 2013 or 14, there's a bit of a contradiction in statements, there was a charity auction where you could bid for the opportunity to have a unique Moshling developed and added into the game for one player only. The father who won this bid chose to get his son, who was accordingly a huge fan, to design the Moshling. Rafi appears as a hypnotic humanoid with a mushroom eyeball for a hand and was then coded in with a unique code that was given to the child designer, also called Rafi in real life, but his username was never disclosed. It was thought in 2014 that the account was found in Bjorn Squishy. However, this was later confirmed to be a hacked account. To this day, no one knows which account had Rafi in the original Moshi Monsters. Where this story takes a turn is very 2021, where the original owner of Rafi, the parent, not the son, went to Twitter to make the greatest announcement yet. They had the unique animation of Rafi despite the game closing down and they wanted to give it and the original Rafi artwork away. As in NFT! Oh Paul, behave. Magic Monsters is something I actually did mention in the original Iceberg video, but after seeing interest from both you guys and people in real life, alongside my own personal curiosity, I just had to dive deeper. Unfortunately, I am quite restricted as I cannot read Chinese, but I still found a lot of interesting information. Huge shout out to Joshy J who helped me translate some of this. For some background, the main character, Magi, or Magic, I'm not sure how they pronounced it, is the main character of Magic Monsters and is actually from a Chinese television show as the entire project was a collaboration with the channel Golden Eagle. The game begins with character creation, which is suddenly interrupted by an evil robot of some sort, instructing evil blobs somewhat reminiscent of an Animal Jam Phantom combined with Iggy and Cherry Bomb as they enter your new home and destroy it. From the footage I have found, I think I have gathered a pretty good idea of the storyline. It appears as though the Moshling equivalent are being hunted by dinosaur trolls, but you save them and you get seeds which you can plant in order to get the Moshling equivalents. Then you must gather bones and give them to a ninja cat that then transforms into an angel before we go and collect rabbit snot. Now we followed a cloaked ghost and after speaking to them, Spider-Man appears! Chinese Spider-Man helps rewire a machine before turning the stage lights on for the cloaked ghost revealing it to be three little balls that then go and watch a movie. And then there was a ninja monkey. At least, that's how I interpreted it. As I previously mentioned, my good friend Joshy J, creator of Weaver World is Awful, graciously translated the first cutscene for me, which alludes to the villains seemingly trying to stop the main character from adopting elves, which I would take to be Moshlings. Perhaps the player has to save them, like you do in Super Moshi missions, but rather than Clonk stealing them from you, when you arrive in the world, these villains seem to already have them. Now we've done the plot, I wanted to have a look at the similarities and differences in this game. And let's be real, it's going to be easier to start with the differences. It looks like the currency is a type of fruit, 
rather than rocks. When you plant seeds for these moshlings, you have to care for the plants in various ways, including watering and music, and you can have to do this numerous times per plant. The missions have a counting game where you have to find numerous items by following the numbers 1 through 5, making me at first believe that this game was for younger kids than moshy monsters. However, after some of the quiz questions being translated, they discuss lunar oceans. So now I'm just confused. <coughs> and of course, the biggest difference that sets apart magic monsters from moshy monsters is that moshy monsters isn't in Chinese. I'm sure there are more major differences, but with the limited context we have, and me lacking the ability to read Chinese, that's all I could really find. But let me know if you see anything else. In terms of similarities, I'll try and be quick. The general layout and color palette, some monster designs, you plant three seeds to catch a pet, the house layout, the UI, the super moshy background and speech bubbles, the daily quiz, the friends tree, the cloak worn is the same color palette as Doctor Strange Glove, the side scrolling of the streets, the pin board, they have the same bongos! The mixtape mission is almost identical to the second ever super moshy mission, and the ninja monkey. In terms of merch, the game wasn't shy, with keychains, plastic toys, plushies, books, and even a mini basketball hoop collection. There are very limited images available for these, unfortunately, and the game itself shut down in 2015, so no sites related to it appear to still be up. Unfortunately, that means I'll never be able to do a Magic Monsters Let's Play. Unless we got Magic Monsters rewritten. Of course, it wouldn't be an iceberg video without unearthing some major secret, but today will be slightly different. Burn Shortliver had a theory that since we never see the leader of Klonk, aside from a fist behind a chair, that maybe the chair itself is sentient and the true leader of Klonk. Or maybe it's something else entirely, but the fact we don't ever see the leader of Klonk is incredibly fascinating, and it's definitely a mystery that a smart, handsome man would definitely solve. Too bad Matt Pat's retired. And that brings us to another close on a Moshi Monsters deep dive. From real life events to hidden mobile games, the Moshiverse continues to show us that it is bigger than any of us could have ever imagined. If there is anything I have missed or gotten wrong that was not mentioned, let me know below and I'll make a video about it in hopefully less than 1038 days. If not, I look forward to seeing you all again soon when I uncover who the mysterious clonk leader actually is. <laughs>